Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the channel. And uh, we just want y'all to read that disclaimer act. This is only for fair use of entertainment purposes and research, okay? We just want to put that out there. And you can definitely read the comment of the disclaimer as we mosey along throughout this video, okay? So welcome, welcome, welcome to the channel. Uh, peace out, peace up, and hopefully you're having a wonderful Sunday morning, afternoon, or evening, okay? But... Do me a favor, like and share and comment on my videos, and definitely share, 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 and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe in my Goomer Pile voice, okay? You know how you go, where he go, uh, surprise, 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 and I'm asking y'all to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Can you do that for me? And then go on over to my second channel, which is called Make It Make Sense. And subscribe over there, okay? So we can make that channel up and running and getting promotional ads on it as well as we do on my main channel. But enough is enough of that. I cannot believe we're still talking about Michael Jackson and everything that took part at the Neverland Ranch. I mean, can we let the dead be buried and, and, and left alone? Nope, because in today's world, it always has been, always will be. You are worth more dead than alive. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But anyway, we got Caroline Frost who wrote this uh, particular article on Deadline. Uh, dot com, and she titled it "Leaving Neverland." Director condemns new Michael Jackson bio. The proposed new Michael Jackson bio would glorify a man who abused children, according to the director of "Leaving Neverland." Filming is due to begin on. The Story of Jackson's Life, produced by Graham King, who pre previously produced the Queen biopic Bohemian Rhapsody, 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 as well as The Departed. With the cooperation of John Brace and John McClain, the co-executors of J Jackson's estate, Leave Neverland directed Dan Reed released his searing documentary in 2019, in which he interviewed a link, a link to men, Wade Robinson and James uh, Safechuck, both of whom have been invited as children to stay with Jackson at his California ranch and to accompany him on tour. Okay. The, in the four-hour documentary, Robson recounted how he was seven years old when the first singer he says allegedly ate him. Uh, Safe Truck said he was age 10 when he first suffered abuse by Jackson. And the UK's Guardian Reed writes, No one is talking about canceling this movie, which would glorify a man who ate children. What the total absence of outrage accompanying the announcement of this movie tells us is that Jackson seduction is still a living force operating from beyond the grave it seems that the press his fans and the vast or older demographic who grew up loving jackson are willing to set aside his unhealthy relationship with children and just go along with the music okay now uh, of course we all have our opinions on what he did do what he didn't do and uh the guardian uh dot com that picked it up too given they spill on what they felt about the biopic. Okay. Uh, the director of Disturbing Documentary, Leaving Neverland, which featured two of the singer's young victims, says the forthcoming film about the star sends out an unacceptable message. It's been four years since the first public screening of Leaving Neverland to a shocked, tearful American audience in a packed, 266-seat venue at the 2019 Sundance Film Festival. The four-hour documentary, co-produced by 
Channel 4 and HBO, is a brutal, frank, and explicit account of two abusive relationships that the King of Pop, Michael Jackson, had with children. One with Wade Robinson. Robson describes how the boy was just seven when the entertainer first hated him. And, and an earlier one with James Satchel, who was all 10 years old when it began. The film's spine consists of searing, candid interviews with Robson and Satchel and their mothers. The Guardian reported after, after the film ended as ashen face crowd rose to their feet to applaud Wade and James, who arrived on stage, both visibly moved by the response. Uh, what had motivated uh, me and Robinson and Safe Truck even more so to embark on making Neverland, leaving Neverland, was not just an opportunity to expose Jackson by having his victim speak on camera for the first time. Here was an opportunity to bring the widest possible audience and insight into how children fell victim to the sexual abuser, the psychological of the predator, and above all, the grooming process. Maybe we could uh, help prevent young children falling prey to that most scarring cr crippling of crimes of course the fact that the child molester in this case was the one of the world's most famous men meant that a lot of people would watch setting fire to the jackson's reputation already charred around the edges by multiple allegations and payments of hush money was not the primary goal of the documentary but it seemed like a necessary collateral impact if you know what your idol has abused children, should that not make celebrating his personality a little bit more problematic, to say the least? Now, from what I understand, uh, you can look at it from so many different perspectives. But my only and biggest concern was if there was smoke, which really would turn into fire, what, why would the parents continue to keep bringing their said children to said allegedly uh, a molester? Why did they continue to keep bringing him to Neverland Ranch if they knew or had a hint of something that just wasn't kosher going on? That's what I don't understand. We want to burn the man at the stake. But then we want to take money from him as well. Where do they do that at and why? That's all I'm saying. I have no guilt. I have no innocence. When it comes to um, this situation. Because all of it was very, very nefariously done. When we were to think that he did do these things that were portrayed to be put on him. That's my piece of the information. If you can tell me why these parents, and it's the uh, big ongoing story that he did do these to kids, why would so many parents, educated parents, would come and be a part of something at Neverland and the sleepovers? Why would you want your child to sleep over? It didn't make much sense. So I'm like, if you're going to get him, you're going to have to get the parents as well. We need everybody to be, to be accountable for their actions that were played into this idea that he did this to these kids. Okay? We don't need to just to get the um, person who's doing it. We need to get the people who are taking the kids to him. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm going with it? We can't punish one and uphold the other one in a better light. No, they both need to be uh, dealt with accordingly and appropriately. But that's just my say. Moving back on to the article. It says, I write this because now, four years after the first screening of Neverland, a movie, a movie about Jackson due to begin filming, it is being made by Graham King, the Oscar-winning British producer of Mike Scorsese, uh, 2006 crime thriller The Departed, and more recently, a nominee for the 2018 Freddie Mac Mercury by uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Hand in hand with John Banker and Branca and Joan McClain, the co executors of Jackson's estate. The Hollywood Reporter notes, according to the Lion Gates distributor, the film will address all aspects of Jackson's life, through, though it's unclear how the film will address the many controversies involving the late music icon given that the film is made in conjunction with his estate, which has defended him against the accusations of sexual abusing children. 
that is putting it very delicately indeed. Um, that gentle raising of the eyebrow by the Hollywood Reporter has been pretty typical of the press reactions to the announcements of the buyout. In an era when full of throttle outrage accompanies anything that smells of uh, delegatization and insensitivity against a vulnerable group, it amounts to a deafening silence. No one is talking about canceling this movie, which will glorify a man who ate children. Okay. It is estimated that one in four women and one in six men in the U.S. have been sexually assaulted as children. There is no reason why the statistics will be any different for the rest of the world. So the survivors of child sexual abuse are very large and very vulnerable group. But for the most part, they stay silent. Why? The most shocking insight of leaving Neverland and the most painful for the any parent to accept is that as part of the grooming process, the predator makes the child fall in love with him, drawing them into a kind of guilty complexity in the abuse. So child sexual abuse victims will be baffling to the uninitiated, cover up for their abusers and protect them for years or decades. That is why Robinson became a key defense witness at the 2005 child sexual abuse trial of Jackson and was instrumental in getting him acquitted. The jury believed Robinson found the singer not guilty. He now admits that he lied in court to protect his mentor and abuser. Mm. So the money's gone. And now you want to bring up something to enlighten that you were just enamored by him, adored by him, or you adored him, and you wanted to save him from an accused a uh, statement that would have put him in jail. Hmm. So the message that you're giving, if a pedophile is rich and powerful enough, society will forgive him. Well, it begs to differ, huh? Epstein and all these other people, uh, Prince Andrew and some other things going on, other people, ever, uh, familiar faces, Ellen DeGeneres, and the list can go on and on and on. Because we're talking about the rich, the very much so affluent type of person. Not everyday, mundane, ordinary people such as himself. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Now we're getting into Oprah Winfrey. Herself a victim of childhood ape. Named it when she told her studio audience in special programming with Robinson and Sake Truck on the night of the Leaving Neverland television broadcast in March of 2019. Child sexual abuse should more accurately be called child sexual seduction. Either way, it's just a play on words, okay? Oprah. Um... What the total absence of outrage accompanying the announcement of this movie tells us is that Jackson's seduction is still a living force operating behind the grave. It seems that the press, his fans, and the vast order demographics who grew up loving Jackson are willing to set aside his unhealthy relationship with children and just go along with the music. To them, I say this, even if you don't or do not believe a word of what his many accusers have said, even if you are not concerned by the police investigations and the massive payouts to halt legal proceedings, how do you explain the completely uncontested fact that for years Jackson spent innumerable nights alone in bed with young boys? What was he doing with them alone in his Neverland bathroom? with alarm bells in the corridor that cannot be accepted by any measures. Now, again, why was the parents leaving him or their children in the midst of what they say he was accused of being? We cannot negate that fact. We cannot leave that out as well. Okay, we just can't do it. Uh, to the filmmakers, I say, how will you represent the moment when Jackson, a grown man in his 30s, takes a child by the hand and leads him into that bedroom? How will you depict what happens next by st- sidestepping the question of Jackson predilect? delegation for sleeping with young boys. You are broadcasting a message to millions of survivors of child abuse. That message is, if a pedophile is rich and popular enough, society will forgive him. But my thing is like this, okay? <laughs> to me, Michael had a child state like mine. When he was out touring, he was a man, he was doing what he needed to do to uh, further, you know, 
make his bank account be in the black. You know, black is good when we're talking about money, revenue streams. When you're in the red, you, you don't mess stuff somewhere. You own folks or you're not making no money somewhere. Um, but my deal again, why would the children just don't come to his house by themselves? You see what I'm saying? They are escorted by people. Couldn't it possibly be that Michael's is his, his child state of mind? I mean, my goodness, he worshiped Peter Pan. Okay. Start looking at Pete, start looking like Peter Pan when he aged out and when he was um, formally pronounced dead. I mean, he had a child state mind, so couldn't it be that even if he slept in the bed with children, they were fully clothed, he was doing a sleepover? I mean, we ought to take all this stuff in consideration. He was not the normal type of individual. Okay, he was very selective, he was very peculiar, and he thought of himself as royalty. But he nothing. Uh, he was just a, a black boy growing up in uh, Gary, Indiana, and his dad was working for a steel mill or some type of hard working type labor job, and they were just trying to make it do what it do. I mean, did you see their first home that they had, and all the kids that they had? Somebody was sleeping on the floor, and somebody was sleeping on the sofa. It was not bunk beds were going around everywhere. But I, to me, I still find it very insulting that we are still talking about this story. I mean, I'm just saying he never was accused and uh, legally found guilty from 12 of his peers. The man has been dead I don't know how long, too long, that we keep coming back wanting to visit this situation. I mean, we got current people that are doing these things that they think, they thought, or they know that Michael Jackson did children. We still have current people still living this day, still doing these things. Have you heard of trafficking? Well, it's still being done today, right now, as we speak. But we're preying on the dead instead of getting the ones that are alive. And we can put them out of operation. We can put them in federal prison. We can make them pay for the things that they did to current children. Do you understand where I'm going with these people? I mean, just because his name is in the headlights again, the man is gone. He's dead. He's 6, 12, 16, 18, 20 feet. Dead. But I think he he's residing in a mausoleum, I believe, where he's not actually in dirt. He's in uh, concrete cement. Um, you can actually go visit him and put a little flower in his little, I don't know what you call those things. Because they look like more type of, uh, what do you call it? refrigerators that you put them in that's what it looks like to me it's kind of gotten like a little fancy with the marble and all that kind of stuff but it's still like a uh a mortuary type setting um where they put you you know when you get an autopsy done because they think foul play was done on your body you know those little slide cabinets they put you on still cold and push you back in like a refrigerator type of situation but like I said I can't confirm and I cannot deny because if I'm going to get him I need to get everybody involved and I do mean everybody involved one person should not go down for the many that participate in this stuff uh, of being with you know unsupervised children okay where there's a beginning, a beginning, there's a middle, and there's an end. And we need to stop looking at one person and look at the bigger picture. Because there, there's a bigger picture to be looked at. But I just find it very weird and very calculating that you still want to make money off the dead. I mean, they're doing it with Whitney Houston. The child has a makeup line. In her name that you can partake of. 
Whitney didn't do that when she was alive. And she could have had, Cheryl, she could have had a fragrance. She could have had clothing, apparel, not just a makeup line. She could have had it all if that's what she wanted to do. However, it did not come up in her lifetime that she wanted to have a makeup line. Okay? And God knows if she put out anything, as far as anything, to get as a souvenir or just to say you got something that got Whitney Houston name on it. You don't think the millions upon millions would have not supported her? To me, it's just like a money grab. They want to continue to make money off the dead. And it is ridiculous. I mean, same thing with Elvis Presley. And the Graceland thing. The man is dead. And he still got his house that he was living in. Still being sought after to go vacation and visit. To hopefully get a feel of how Mr. Elvis Presley got down. And what type of furniture he actually had. Now me personally, they would have to show me the gun he used to shoot the television. Because they were mad. I wants to see that. I wants to see not the replica, but the real thing of that big ass gaping hole that he took that revolver and shot in the TV. Shot, yeah, shot at the TV because he was upset about something. That's what I would want to see. That's the salacious, scandalous stories that I want to see that's killed. Of course, no bullets need to be in it, of course, but just the whole thing and his chair that he was sitting in at the time. That would captivate my mind and be like, what was this joker thinking about? Was he drinking? Was he popping pills at the time? And they should have had his pills if he was such a drug addict. They should have had all his pills displayed. However that scene was when he you know, did it, they, they should have had that whole scene. But like I said, it's only people that were with him that can confirm or deny if it really happened, and it happened the way they said it happened. But we're always going to have people's opinions, their perspectives, and that's all we got, really, to keep a story going. But that's all I got for this video, guys. Hope y'all like it, love you guys, have more hard. Don't forget to subscribe, and go over to my other channel and subscribe as well. And I'll see y'all on the next video. Bye-bye.